Hello and welcome to the Garion Tabletop. I am Garion Reaver and this is a Far Waste devlog. Last time I went through the basics about player genus and species, equivalent to player race in other games. In this log and the next few I'll be going through the various options, giving a bit of lore, a bit of mechanics and a bit of advice. As always, any content in this is subject to change as the game grows and I get feedback. If you have any thoughts, don't hesitate to put them in the comments, or come join us on the Garion Reaver Discord linked in the description. Sort of seemed obvious to start with humans, they are the baseline by which we, as humans, judge other options. Humans tend to be the most vanilla option, so for the far waste I've endeavoured to make them mechanically equivalent. Their traits are about what they can do that other genera can't. Some fluff for you. Undisputed masters of the world before the apocalypse and the perpetrators of that same apocalypse. Tenacious, prolific and highly adaptable, humanity continues to hold its place as the dominant species of the postpoc, constantly struggling against new and hostile sentient creatures, rampant monsters and the harshness of the very world they created. The vast majority of settlements in the far wastes and the surrounding lands are human settlements often protected by the dedicated people of the avant-garde malaise. Consummate survivors even in the face of oblivion, humans don't always get along with other sentient species. Many see them as the cause of the world's woes and frankly it's difficult to disagree with that. But no one can understand the lost world like the descendants of, and sometimes the very same, people who lived there. Each genus has a starting boost to one or more stats and I talked more about how that works in my previous log, linked at the end and in the description. Humans get a plus one to any three different stats. Unlike basically every other genus, they don't have anything dictating what, but the trade-off is that it's just a plus one each. Each option also has a genus trait in addition to any traits they get from their species. Humans genus trait is for humanity. The organisation known as the Avant-Garde Malise in their original language, or the Vanguard Militia in the wider UE, consider it their primary purpose to protect humans and humanity. As a human, the Vanguard will assume you are an ally of theirs and that they are an ally of yours. They will try to protect you and render you any assistance that they feel is necessary. Unless, of course, you have shown yourself to be an enemy of the Vanguards or an ally of their enemies. Most vanguards do not take kindly to humans who align themselves with abominations like Thalborn, Fischkind or Gamverites. I'll talk more about the vanguards in a future devlog, but they're the closest thing to police or military that exist in the lands of the old UE. Having their inherent protection, unless you do something to betray them in inverted commas, is quite a boon for human characters. Then we come to the species, the subraces. Humans currently have two species, I'm on the fence about a third. Not sure if the third should be its own genus or not in the game at all. Eh. The two species are pre-poc and post-poc, basically if they grew up dealing with the post-apocalypse or not. Let's talk pre-poc first. The apocalypse didn't come as a complete surprise. While it's impossible to say exactly how many people knew it would happen when it did, virtually every community on the planet ran nuclear drills at least every few months. That level of preparedness, while never enough, certainly allowed numerous people to seek shelter when the time came. Some of those unlucky survivors proceeded to find a way to make it to the modern day. By far the most common method of reaching the postpoc is cryogenic stasis. Flash freezing technology had been around a while by the time the end came. The only limiters stopping any random person from waiting out the centuries in oblivious ice were access to a cryo booth capable of life support and a power supply good enough to last the years. That isn't to say that only cryo frozen people could last that long. Any method you can think of from perfect cloning to isolated underground bunker societies can conceivably result in a human who didn't grow up knowing the harshness of the far wastes. Alongside the Far Waste game, I'm also planning to write a series of stories set in that world. They're both to help people envision the sort of adventures they can have, and because I genuinely love what we're building with this world. I mention this now because the first story will have a pre-poc human protagonist. As for the pre-poc trait, from another world. Born in a relatively safer, happier time or place, life in the apocalypse is quite a change from whatever your life was like before. 
But on the plus side, you have better knowledge than most people of things from the old world. You have the glow on all pre-pox skill checks. The glow and the grey are when you roll two dice instead of one and use the higher result if you have the glow, and the lower result if you have the grey. This is in reference to the currency of the Far Wastes, crystallised water from the first detonation that appear as translucent black beads that glow red when near others like them, called blood drops or black drops due to their coloration. The glow and the grey are how merchants can tell fake drops from real ones. If it glows, it's real. If it's dull and grey, it's fake. This led to the glow being a term for good luck, and the grey being a term for bad luck, hence the glow and the grey. I want species traits to have an element of growth with the character, so most if not all get something extra at a higher level. At level 7, and a reminder this goes up to 25, you gain interest in a new skill, and two free skill points in that skill as you adapt to life post pock Skills are for another video, but basically you can only add skill points to skills in which your character has interest. In a way, the pre pock human is the most challenging species for a player, they're not exactly apocalypse ready, with the majority of their knowledge base being things that no longer exist. That said, there are countless undisturbed bunkers, labs, machines and mysteries scattered across the world, just waiting for someone with a forgotten understanding to use them. post pock the most common human species in the post-apocalypse. To grow up and live in a world that limps on after its own fiery demise, that is the badge of honour that all post pock humans wear. While some settlements offer relative safety for their inhabitants, allowing children to play in peace, the vast majority are troubled places beset by monsters, resource shortages and anarchic unrest. post pock children tend to grow up quickly. Despite all the threats and dangers, humans remain prevalent with settlements spanning almost every landmass on the planet, and even some situated in the hazardous far waste themselves, post pock humans come in an uncountable variety of colours, creeds and personalities. Not all of them are nice, but some of them are. The more things change, the more they stay the same. The post pock trait for humans is somewhat unique, adaptable. Perhaps the most remarkable thing about humanity is their ability to adapt to situations and environments. This became even more important after the apocalypse when a wide variety of skills was suddenly essential for day-to-day -day survival. When you level up, you can choose to lose a skill point in a skill with interest to gain one in a different skill with interest. Skills are still for another video, but aside from basic stat boosts, you need skill points to improve your skill check rolls. You get your starting skill points and interest from the job or profession you pick when you make your character, still working on that stuff. While they don't get a substantial starting boost in any stat, post pock humans have a versatility of skills that no other species can match. Given time and levels, they can retrain themselves to have impressive knowledge of essentially whatever appeals to them. Overall, the human genus, while perhaps the most vanilla option for a player, is something of a jack of all trades. They did, after all, invent all those trades. Having no set starting skills and a leaning towards skill variety, a human is a very handy ally to have on a campaign. And that's about it for this genus. If you like the sound of anything I've talked about here, come and give us a hand. I'm working on this with the help of the people over on the Gary and Reaver Discord, which is linked in the description. Come and share your thoughts, or just drop in and show your support. Thank you very much for watching, subscribe for more Far Waste devlogs, or for board games, card games, miniatures, and TTRPGs like this. And I will catch you later.